This next section I call spiritual currency or spiritual currencies. All right, there's two spiritual currencies, time and attention. Now, look, we can readily see this, right? Time is money, people say. It's currency, right? What am I going to spend my time on? What am I going to pay attention to? Pay attention. You pay for something, you get something in return when you pay for something, right? That's what attention will get you here. It will get you something in return. You pay attention, you're going to come out of here with a lot of understanding, there's two spiritual currencies, time and attention. This analogy can be very readily, can be seen very readily in the saying, spending time and paying attention. Whatever information or endeavors we put our time and attention toward, we end up getting something in return for that investment of these currencies. This is what real money is, folks. Real money. This will get you real money. One eye, moan eye. Okay? If you want real money instead of the fake Federal Reserve nonsense fiat paper currency money that isn't worth the paper it's printed upon, then keep thinking that that has value. Okay? And people who say gold is value, gold is real money. Yeah, well, I ask people, what intrinsic value does gold have? And they say, well, oh, it's been traded with throughout time immemorial. People valued it all, all time. Does that make it intrinsic? You answered my question. It's like saying, uh, why, why does that projector have intrinsic value? And you say, because I find it valuable. No, that projector has intrinsic value because it's capable of projecting an image. And if I want that task done, that's what I use a projector for. Okay? Well, what's gold used for? Can you build clothing out of it? Can you build a house out of it? Is it malleable enough to be uh, molded into a weapon of some sort? You gonna take shelter under it? Well, maybe if you have enough of it. <laughs> you know, the whole point is there is no intrinsic value to this. It's something that's bit, the idea of it having in, of any precious metal having intrinsic value, other than you know. Okay, in a technological society, it's used for computers. This is true. Okay, but I'm talking about in nature. You know, where would this idea of intrinsic value of gold come from in the ancient past? People say, well, it's used as a medium of exchange. Okay, it, money is not a medium of exchange. People think of it as a medium of exchange, and it's not. It's, it's incorrect. Okay? Money is the limiter of energy in the system. See, people think of money as currency. Even the name is a mind control technique because it's supposed to be about it's the current in the energy system. This is the current. It's the amperage, right? No, it's not. It's, it's not the capacitance either. It's not a store. That's another thing people will tell you money is, what they say is real money. Okay? It's all fake. It's all fake. It's not a store either. You know what it is? It's the resistance in the system. It's the resistance to change in the system. It acts as the resistor. Because as long as that modality of slavery called money continues to exist, there will always, it will always be extraordinarily difficult to create real lasting change. So again, again, I, I piss off everybody. <laughs> Religion's gotta go, scientism's gotta go, new age thoughts gotta go, money's gotta go. All of it's gotta go. You know why? It's all religion. It's all religion, and the word religion means to hold one back, to tie one up and keep them where they're at, as we're gonna get to in a few moments. Okay? So let's get back to spiritual currencies. We end up getting something in return on what we put our investment of spiritual currencies toward. And you know what that, if it's put toward the right goals, the end result is true money, one eye, okay? True spiritual vision, the ability to see, to unoccult something and see it for what it really is. That's what comes from truly putting time and attention onto the right things. This return could come in the form of knowledge, it could come in the form of understanding. It could come in the form of skills, expertise, and, and empowerment. But only if we invest these two spiritual currencies wisely. And let me tell you something, folks. That's what, why most people don't have any money. They got nothing to pay for it with. See, you, you pay attention and you get money. You spend time and you get money. I'm talking about the real thing. Cool. We're going to take a break in about five to ten minutes, okay? So we have to invest our spiritual currencies wisely. 
We should seek to improve our quality of attention by placing it upon information that is capable of improving both ourselves and the human condition as a whole. Give me a heads up in about eight or nine minutes. Thank you. Such an effort would also constitute a valuable investment of our time. We should ask ourselves, what am I spending my time on? What am I spending my time doing? And what am I paying attention to? That's where you will find whether you're investing in real value, something that is truly valuable. If most of the time we're spending our time on nonsense and trivialities and, you know, divisive things and TV and sports and all other kinds of entertainment and distraction, well, you're going to have a return on that investment and that return is going to be low. It's not going to result in much money, real money, okay? Most importantly, we need to ask ourselves, what kind of quality am I getting in return for my investments of time and money? A time and and attention, I'm sorry. Okay? These are the spiritual currencies. And that's what most people don't want to give. They don't want to give these freely for a return on investment. They don't want to pay attention to the right things. They don't want to spend time on the right things. This is a simple chart of how our quality of our attention... Okay, And again, this is in the aggregate, but it's created by all the individuals. How the quality of our overall attention as a species will affect our world in accordance with the principle of correspondence, which states, as goes the microcosm or the microcosmic units, so will become the macrocosm. Okay, So over here, we have a pure information stream. This is good information. This is information that is capable that resonates with truth and is capable of helping to develop wisdom or right action within the being. This over here is the poison information stream like we get from the mainstream media, from scientism, from the New Age movement, from uh, government indoctrination centers called schools. Okay, This is the poisoned information stream. Now, everybody's going to take in some form of a mixture of both of these streams. What the goal needs to be is to purify Just like, hey, you take in bad food, you're going to have bad health. You take in bad information, the output through behavior is going to be bad. So you got to purify. Meaning, if there's valves here on the individual buckets, these are called the individual people, okay? And they're all coming together with the quality of their water, right? What they're holding within their consciousness. And that's all going into the big pool called the world. Everybody's bringing their bucket to the pool, they're pouring it in, and then they're jumping in. That's the world. That's the quality of the world, right? The quality of this whole thing here is going to be based on how much poisoned, polluted information was in your bucket compared to how much pure information was in your bucket. Okay? So there's valves over here. We've got to shut this one off, this brown, muddied valve, muddy valve over here, and we've got to open this one up. Okay? If we do that, the world will be purified and it, we won't be creating self-inflicted suffering. We don't do that, we're going to be swimming in brown muck, okay? And generating all kinds of problems for ourselves. So, how are we spending our time? What are we paying attention to? Is this what we're doing with our time and attention? Sitting behind the hypnosis box? Which means suppression of knowledge. Hypnosis is the suppression of knowledge or the suppression of spirit, okay? Or are we going to devote our time to some pursuits of wisdom, which means developing knowledge, converting it to understanding by processing it accurately, and then converting it into wisdom through action, through right action. And, you know, you got to read to do this. People don't want to hear that either, okay? Reading is required. The ancient Romans had two words, the same word, okay? They meant two different things in their language. The word was liber, L-I-B-E-R. Liber meant free, as in not a slave. A free being would be described as liber, free. It's the basis of the English word liberty. Liberty, liberty, freedom, okay? They had the same word also meant a different concept. So the word liber didn't just mean free. 
If it was used in a different context, does anybody know what else the word liber meant? L-I-B-E-R meant in Latin? Book. It meant book. Does that tell us something? They associated the word, the Latin word for book also meant free in their language. Okay? And again, liber is the basis for the word library. Okay? Liberary. Okay? Where you can go to become free if you read the right books. You know? And again, the world is our library now. You know, we've reunited all the parts of the big library that were cast to the four corners of the earth. The mystery traditions are available at your fingertips now, which hasn't been the case at any time in human history. And what are we doing? We're playing Farmville on Facebook. You know? So we have to ask ourselves, what are we spending our spiritual currency on? And are we investing it wisely for a return of real money, which is actually spiritual enlightenment? I'm going to uh, take a quick break right there, and we'll pick it up with the next section in 10 minutes. 10 minutes, right back here to continue. Thank you.